court accepts the existence of God every time a witness swears to tell the truth. I think it's about time they accept the existence of the devil. Speaking of the devil, see what I did there? Because you get it. All right. <laughs> the man, I love it. Yes. <laughs> the man of the hour. We have to thank you for so much. But first of all, Patrick Wilson sideburns. Thank you. And also, <laughs> one of the scariest conjurings in recent memory. And I think conjuring fans are used to being scared within, you know, the confines of the haunted house. But in this one, we move outside of those four walls and it is equally as terrifying, if not more so. What can they expect? Honestly, a movie that's filled with surprises. I'm, I'm coming at it as a huge fan of this franchise. This really is the darkest story that we've told so far. And it, it comes down to the fact that it's based on this real murder, this extraordinary claim of demonic possession. Arnie Johnson murdered this man and went to court claiming he was possessed by a demon. And that is the backbone of the story. It is an extraordinary claim. The events leading up to it and the events that followed are really incredible. We almost struggled to put all of these, these things into one movie. Hey. You okay there? I think I hurt someone. And Rory, like how um, much pressure did you have to take on the role of Arnie and were you familiar with this, this case before you guys came on board? I'd be naturally interested in this. I think this case doesn't provide any easy answers. I think it's a sensitive topic to be making a film about at all. Someone lost their life because of it. So where I've come, kind of come to my understanding is I don't know what happened. And in the movie, Arnie himself doesn't know what happens. And even from scene to scene, he thinks he's culpable for it. He thinks the demon did it. He thinks he's not possessed at all. So I kind of lent into his confusion and supplemented it with my own. Whatever is going on, whatever happened that day, that was not Arnie. Like throughout it, I kept asking the question, like, why? Why, why am I still with this guy? Like after seeing everything that happened and I, it just took a lot of like connecting the dots for me and like that one of them being um, that like building a relationship with the real Debbie and, and getting her side of the story. And also remember realizing I, I had, as Debbie, I felt like I had a lot of guilt, like, getting Arnie into this situation because like it was my little brother that was possessed and I kind of brought him into my family and I felt like it was kind of all my fault. And so that made me feel like I, I have to save him. <laughs> Something terrible happened here. I think fans would be so excited that James Wan is, you know, behind the story and uh, is a producer on it as well. So what was it like collaborating with this genius of the genre? James, I, coming at it, you know, I worked with him on The Curse of La Llorona and I owe James my career. I've honestly learned so much. He is without a doubt the master of horror. The Conjuring is, is based on, like you said, the internationally renowned case where for the first time ever, demonic possession was used as a defense. If you were to use demonic possession as an alibi in your everyday life, what would it be for? For example, like mine would be like the dishes, like the devil took over, sorry, I'm on the couch, that's what he wants me to do. <laughs> <laughs> Whenever I'm really exhausted, I just go back and I force my wife to rewatch 30 Rock and I think she's just so tired of going back to that and I would just say, the devil made me do it. The devil made you do it, sir. There you go.